All right, we are back with our Halloween special. I couldn't be more excited about this. I'm Ted Lasso. I'm Keely. You look fabulous. You know, next year, I pick out the costumes. <laughs> <laughs> this works! It, it, it does. The only it issue does. is the camera doesn't get the legs. Well, <laughs> that's its, its fault. <laughs> On this episode, we are going to give you our picks, our top three picks. Top three picks, yes. This year's Halloween viewing experience. Three movies that we think you guys need to watch before Halloween hits. Stay tuned. This is Attack on Show. All right. Well, since you're so committed to this, I'm losing my mustache here. Uh, you want to kick things off with your uh, number one Halloween I'm a, pick? I'm a little distracted, but yes, I would absolutely you go love first? it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. My very first Halloween pick. And you know what? I didn't get a chance to do my research and look back, huh. but this may have been my pick as well last year. But I have to go oddly, viewing right now, with Poltergeist. Oh, I think excellent. Poltergeist, though somewhat... Somewhat touched by time. A little dated. A little dated is still an incredible pick. I even think if you watch the making of Poltergeist, you know that's what? scary enough. <laughs> you know what, Rob? I actually think in some ways, <laughs> hearing that story and what they did is a little bit scarier. Yeah, the Spielberg produced. Yes. With Craig T. Nelson. That movie had some crazy issues filming, but I, I agree. I that mean, they a used great... to save money. They actually had actual um, skeletons. Yeah. And on the but didn't set, tell the they actors, brought, no, think. they did not. And they brought in a Native American shaman in to bless the set because they were having so many issues. Ooh. Not to mention all those who have died or become incredibly ill. Oh, from the making yes. of that. Yeah. No, it's a freaky movie about a house being possessed by demons. A uh, new family moves in. Craig T. Nelson's uh, the head of the household. And uh, that is, I think that movie scarred that... so many people over oh, clowns. clowns. Yes. Oh. God, right here. Yeah, look that at the seems... scarring. Look what it results in. That, that's a good pick. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, my number one pick, I'm going with the 1999 dark comedy horror film Idle Hands. Oh! With Devin Sawyer, Seth oh, Green. Okay. Uh, also, people are going to know Eldon Henson from the Daredevil series now uh, oh. and Mighty Ducks. Okay. Uh, and, of course, Jessica Alba is in this. Uh, but this, to me, I think it's a great dark comedy for the season. It's just cheesy enough that there is actually some pretty good scares attached with it. You'll not only be scared, you'll also be getting some good dark laughs at things that you probably shouldn't be laughing no, at. No, yeah, that's what makes it such a good film. My favorite. You want to go back for a piece after the girl in the vent? Uh, but uh, no, I definitely think it's currently free on Pluto TV, which is oh. also a free app. You're going to want to check that out if you don't already have Pluto TV. But I think you're going to watch that movie and enjoy it. And I want to hear from a very basic premise. A guy's hand gets possessed. Um, he's murdering a bunch of people in the city he doesn't know, so he chops his hand off, and now you have this demon hand running around the city wreaking havoc that this kid has to go and, and try and stop, who's like, he's this massive, just pothead loser, him and his buddies, like, laziest people on earth, so that also kind of adds to the laughs, but I think it's a perfect pick for the 2022 Halloween season. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. No, I'm actually going with another classic, because that's kind of my theme tonight. Oh, I like it. Not so much scary, but I think it's really one of the ultimate Halloween movies. What's that? Uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Whoa, really? You yes. know, I've never seen that movie. Oh, my God. See, I, Rocky Horror Picture Show, and it's funny because uh, Tiff actually reminded me of this, it can be such an interactive movie. It's so much fun with people interacting on the film. A lot of times there's a lot of late night viewing still if you can find the right place. It's just a really fun fun movie. I have a lot of great memories of watching it. What's it about? Um, It's literally, it's kind of a musical. Okay. Anyway, it's a musical in a way. And um, it's about two people who kind of get caught up in the wrong house at the wrong time. And it kind of goes from there. It has, um, I believe there's an alien in it. And it's there's an alien in Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yes, like I actually think I it's know sci-fi. Yes. It's not sci-fi though. It's kind of sci-fi <laughs> horror type. Oh, like an illegal alien. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. I'm really that. distracted this episode. <laughs> I'm just saying. Tim Curry in it. Who, Tim Curry. Amazing. Yes, the, the wonderful and amazing girl, Meatloaf. Really? Never let your meatloaf. He actually, actually. Oh. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I will have to R. check that out. R.I.P. Meatloaf. Oh, I get this mustache. You're driving me crazy. Mm. This is a tough episode Wanna to get switch? there. <laughs> no. Wow. Uh, I am going to go for my number two pick. 
Peter Jackson, who we all know from Lord of the Rings. Yes. Fame, epic director. Had a little movie back in 1996 starring my boy Michael J. Fox, who I love every one of his movies. The Frighteners, which... Oh, I've never seen this. No, this is no. a great movie uh, with uh, Michael J. Fox. Uh, it's kind of dark. It's also kind of corny. It kind of runs along the lines of like a Beetlejuice-esque style oh, film. Oh, like Okay. Um, yeah. Where it's not, you know, crazy horror film, but it's it's just dark enough. It has like a real Tim Burton feel to it almost. Um, you know, I can actually see that correlation. Yeah. Like, there was a split almost, it seems like, at some point yes. between Del Toro and, yeah. Okay. Jake Busey's in it. when he, Very early in his career, I want to say it was like one of his first movies. But it basically, be, right? uh, the, the premise of the, the movie is Michael J. Fox uh, had a near-death experience and he can see ghosts. Uh, and he uses I them dead people. to kind of, like, he, he kind of, like, befriends some ghosts to then go haunt houses so he can like leave cards around as like the you know like an exorcist and come and like be read the ghost in the house and it's all this sham problem is is that all of a sudden these deaths start happening from like a grim reaper character oh. and i have to tell you the special effects in this uh you can liken it to kind of like the 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 like reaper looking characters that you saw in lord of the rings you could tell the design kind of stem really? from this reaper the effects in this movie, I think, still hold true today. The Grim Reaper is terrifying in this movie. Um, and I love that as far as the tone of the film because you, you kind of get engulfed in this dark, quirky Tim Burton world. And then it goes, it gets dark towards the oh. end of him trying to realize that, that this Grim Reaper character is now killing actually his ghost friends as well and real people trying to set this new murder record. Uh, it is a great film. I love the, the idea of like, trying to figure out who it is. I think there's a great chase story involved with it with Michael J. Fox's character because now he feels at risk um, normally in a world where he was comfortable like dealing with ghosts that now he's scared and he can watch this Grim Reaper interact with the real world killing people in real time. So the real people who don't see the ghost think Michael J. Fox is crazy when he's like, He's trying to kill him, and all of a sudden somebody okay. starts falling dead in the room, and like it gets terrifying. I think it's a great Halloween film. Currently on Peacock, so if you have Xfinity, oh. uh, I don't know if everybody knows this, but if you have Comcast Xfinity Cable, you get the Peacock app for free. So download oh. the Peacock app, watch Frighteners. I want to hear from you guys to see what you think. I think it's a great film. I think you're going to love it. I have Xfinity. You have Peacock. Then. I have Peacock. I download have it. Let me know what peacock. you think. Peacock. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you do. No. Oh. <laughs> uh, what do you got next? My last is, again, I'm going to kind of go off a little bit. Uh, People Under the Stairs. Oh. Incredibly gory, early 90s film. Uh, you know, wrong house at the wrong time. Yes. A super, super fun film that, you know, it's kind of got a bit of an escape part of it, too. It is the largest basement on the fucking planet, though. It is an incredibly large basement, which is one of those wide things, walls. The wide walls. <laughs> it's one of those things like people are literally living in the basement, but with inside the walls. It's one of those films like you didn't realize at the time, like, yeah, that makes no damn sense because you're so into the jump scares and every kind of the goriness and just kind of the whole messed up family thing that's going on with it. But then again, it's one of those great films, and I, I think you could probably look at some of the really off cast stuff that you see now and kind of look back and be like, oh, it started there. Yeah. Yeah, great film. No, and it's a Wes Craven. It is Wes Craven. I meant to mention that. Who yes. Knows horror very well. And he did it. I, yeah. I, I, John it's Birch, who one of my favorites. Yep. Uh, on, the, on the show here. We're uh, hoping to meet him one day if mm -hmm. Harley Walling can make it happen. Come on. <laughs> That's a free plug, Harley. Harley, Put try a free plug. <laughs> That's your top three. That's my top three. Yeah. All so oh, right. Yeah. Wow, I think we've already gone to the last pick. We're, we're flying through this. Are you, are you ready? I think it took you longer to do your makeup. It. I got this. It looks pack. great, though. Thank it looks you. great. I appreciate it. It looks great. I'm very pretty. Uh, I am going to go, since we're on this huge, like, Korean kick, South Korea, not North, uh, of all these TV series and movies coming oh, out. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going with Train to Busan. I, no idea. Again, fantastic. No. no. Currently on Netflix. Okay. Also YouTube, Tubi, Peacock. It's on everything right now. Well, what's the breakdown on it? it? Is, Give me the breakdown on the what it is. Uh, basically, uh, what happens is these people are on a train during a zombie outbreak. Oh, okay. And Kinda the cool zombies already. in this series are 
terrifying. So <laughs> they're they're taking this train to what they think is like a safe haven. Doesn't Asia do zombies very well? Oh yeah, because right. they they do like the contortion, or, like yes, cracking. Yes, yes, like it's yeah. eerie when people are changing this. Uh, people will recognize some of the cast. There's a few people um, that you would have seen from like Squid Games, um, oh. also uh, from the Marvel movie Eternals. Mad Madang Siok, uh, who was in Eternals. Hey, can I just say, well done. Thank you. Yeah, that was Thank well you. done. Yeah. Yes, great. Uh, Gong Yu, who I think is actually a really good actor. I've seen him in a few series. Uh, he just he was a guy smacking the people in Squid Game. Oh, okay. All off. right. Yeah. Uh, but he's, that. he's got a lot of leading roles in, in other South Korean films. He's a very good actor. But one of the things I really like about South Korean movies when you're watching these, um, like basically how. Here, hold on. Hold on. Yes. No. Did any of you who are watching still expect him to just say that? Because that was that was really cool. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, I, yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things I want to highlight with these the series um, is that you really don't have a, a sense of who is safe and who is not when you're watching them. Like I, I credit this to oh, okay, uh, yeah. A lot of their TV series they do this uh, where you will like a main character you'll like somebody who's kind of the lead and then all of a sudden like they off them and i so there's I, like, a, not a lot of plot armor there's what you're trying no, to say like they're all like anybody's up for anybody's up for yeah like grass. we're all yeah. dead that's a great tv series yes. you go during yes. october yes. but did just you just you... give a fourth no it was a series we're okay all right, movies, all right movies uh but i i think train of busan does a great job at keeping that intensity level and, and building the anxiety when you're watching it you're going to start caring for some characters that may or may not be safe and go. It's always through. rough, isn't um, it? Yes. So I really credited this movie when I was watching it because I do think emotionally it hooked you. They did a great job on character development. The intensity of the zombies, insane. I like that they use a lot of practical effects and makeup with their nice. zombies. Uh, and these are the fast running zombies that I like. Like Which... I, I prefer than the the, the the Walking Dead. Yeah, slow. I kind of like, you know, I've, I've had this debate. Like, how would that work? I don't know. I feel like if you if you could walk, you could run, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I but mean, you got to walk before you can know. run. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We're going to call this practice the exorcist because it's all about possession and domination. I like that. Yes. yes. But that is my top three picks. Just top three picks. Make sure you give them a watch. You got a lot of time left before Halloween hits. We want to hear back from you if you've watched these movies, if any of these are your classics, classics that you go back I to too. and watch yes. every year. Yes, yes. Let us know if we pick some of your favorites hey, or if we introduced you to something new. Or let us know what your favorites are and share them with us. Yes. You never know. Maybe something we pick up on and we do next year for our Halloween episode. Yeah, we need something to watch, clearly. Yes. <laughs> we we got too much time on our hands. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Jeff, you look fabulous. I want to thank you for your commitment. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate I that. I hope all the I gotta watchers... Give a, I got to give a big uh, thank you to uh, Miss Pugmire. She did an incredible job on my makeup tonight. Yeah, you... It's look... the only time we've actually had someone come in and do yeah. makeup. I'm going to buy you your next round. Nice. <laughs> nice. Make sure you click like and subscribe. If Jeff hasn't earned that by now, yeah, no <laughs> shit, thank you. God, I don't know. What, I'm really what, missing what. the Sailor Moon costume. Yeah, the that, that, yeah, that was nice. We we should have the wig then. <laughs> There's also another icon I forgot to mention. They got to oh, click. What's that? Oh, I did like and subscribe. Oh, you gotta hit the bell. If you don't hit the bell, you're never gonna know when our next episode comes out. And God willing, you may miss this. Yes. So make sure you also. Comment within the comments. So comment in the comments. Let us know what you think. You know, what am I? Like, what what would you do? You know, maybe, maybe not. An hour of the night. Yes. <laughs> How many tricks does this say? <laughs> As always, I'm Robbie slash Ted Lasso. And I am Jay Marsh. And we want to thank you for watching this Halloween special. This is Attack on Show.